Uh, now we go to the modern, to Dudok, Dudok uh, the, the Dutch um, uh, modernist, considered the father of uh, modern uh, Dutch architecture. And um, he, he's, uh, he was, uh, he is a very important architect. So Willem, Willem Marinus Dudok, uh, born in 1884, uh, you know, just three years uh, younger than uh, Le Corbusier. I, I always have problems with Le Corbusier. He was born either in 1887 or 1878. One of the two, if my memory is not uh, is not uh, functioning. Uh, and to 1974, this was the man. I think he worked in the army for a while, and then. But he, he was a very very important architect and. Uh, not too many people in, in the Netherlands can claim the role of the father of modern Dutch architecture, but he does. Dudok, Willem Dudok, William Dudok, if you want. Uh, rather elegant, but architects in general are elegant. They, they are you know, people who know how to negotiate with society and aesthetics. Drawings, some drawings by Dudok uh, this one is less impressive, but uh, uh, there are others. This was built, unfortunately, it was destroyed. Uh, uh, but a great uh, mall, actually. But, um, you know, it was a mall, but the building was very well built. And uh, we are going to see some pictures of it. So, yes, from Raphael to Dudok is a distance. Um, Modernity has its virtues too, its values. You know, we, we cannot condemn, uh, you know, uh, modernity to insignificance because we live in modernity and, uh, you know, it, it has its own vitality, it has its own in inventions, it has its own beauty. The city hall in Il Hilversum, 1928, 1931, this is one of his best works, if not the best. And his style, because we could talk actually about the style, is, uh, is illustrated well in this, in this building. Uh, maybe that uh, spire is a little, that tower is a little bit too tall and too emphatic uh, for my taste, but I was born in, uh, in, in the Libra, under the Libra sign, so uh, although I like excesses, but uh, it does seem to me a little bit too, <laughs> uh, too emphatic. Um, but it's a great building, actually. It's a great building. And uh, uh, let's see again. It's a city hall. It's a city hall indeed. Uh, that tower seems to proclaim um, the power of this city hall. It has a lot of, I mean, this, uh, you know, mini lake in front of it is, is, is adding a lot to the building and its reflections are very nice. I like very much this, this building, you know, and I think Frank Lloyd Wright would have loved it too. It's, 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 it's some kind of a, it has some relations. I, he, he had a great impact on the Netherlands architecture, uh, on, on the Dutch architecture, Frank Lloyd Wright. And, but this is transformed for an urban kind of Frank Lloyd Wright and there are very subtle things and uh, there is variety, there is movement, there is a quest for architectonic freedom, maybe even the representation, the graphic representation of the plan of the building has something I feel somehow connected with right. Um, 1920s, uh, it's a great building and uh, it had an impact on the, on the Dutch architecture. The brickwork is exquisite, as the Dutch uh, are accustomed to do. Uh, so, <clears> the <throat> city hall by Dudok. It's not overwhelmed by details, but there are gestures of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, grace in a way. Uh, and uh, even here, it is very well designed, I think. Yeah. 
You wouldn't expect something like this from an army man, actually. But uh, again, you know, uh, let's not have preconceptions. He built also a building in Paris. We are going to see it. Um, yes, this is modern architecture, and we cannot deny its uh, its uh, its value. A school from 1921, 1922, so 100 years old kind of similar with what we already saw that's what i that's why that's why i use the word style the dudok style because uh, almost all his buildings are kind of similar Essentially, he works with horizontal um, uh, volumes, and then there is a vertical which accentuates either the entrance or, uh, you know, the corner of a street. Another school, uh, this one different from the previous one. And I would say if you build something like this today, you would be considered uh, more than acceptable. Uh, it was built 100 years ago, so its modernity is for all to see. You notice the car, the car belongs to a different age, but the building could very well belong to our time. A department store, this one was destroyed during the World War II and it's very, very sad. Uh, Rotterdam was ravished by bombings in, in the Second World War. Look at this building, you know. I mean, even the, the, those who hate modernism should acknowledge its elegance and uh, it was built. It was built and it was destroyed during the Second World War. Very, very sad. Of course, it wasn't the only building that was destroyed. A lot of Rotterdam was destroyed. Look at the cars and look at the building. They belong to two different ages. Uh, the building is as a modernity which would have been considered audacious even in our time. But the cars... <laughs> The rendering for this building and it's you know very similar to what was built said it is incredible uh, that the ability of humankind to uh, you know uh, destroy itself to um, negate its own uh, levels of excellence is it, it is incredible to me that that we seem to learn nothing. You know, it's like it, it, as if the war is an unavoidable, unavoid, uh, ah, sorry, I'm too, I'm not, I'm, I'm not well, as you can see, I cannot pronounce this word, but it's, it's, it's incredible to me that the war cannot be avoided. How come? It's not a fatality that comes upon us from another planet. We generate it. 1965, so we already passed over the Second World War, and this is a building from 1965, uh, City Hall. Oh. Uh, the typical Dudok building with a, with a, with a, with a slender, uh, imposing uh, vertical. Otherwise, the building is different from what we saw, but still, you recognize uh, Willem Dudok. And I think it's a good building, yes. Um, in its own way. In a country which uh, knows a lot about architecture. 
uh, a monument from 1932. Uh, uh, when I presented again about the Dudok uh, in the summer last year, there was an architect here from Indonesia who actually studied in Ro and worked in Rotterdam and, and she explained to me, but I forgot um, what was the monument about, what its actual function was. Um, so this is the building built by uh, Dudok at the edge of the sea, and uh, it's it's um, it's a fine building. It's uh, it's clearly uh, modern, modern, and it's 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 slender. It's elegant. You'll see the stair as well. Um, it's it's functional. It's 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 not pretentious. I like this building. Maybe that top. With, the, with sloping roofs is a little bit too placid and predictable, but uh, you cannot see it uh, from all uh, angles or you have to be at a certain distance. Um, in fact, only now I noticed it. Uh, I, most pictures I saw and I, 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 I evaluated were like this. And here is the, the, the staircase. Cité Universitaire Collège Néerlandais in Paris from 1939, so before the Second World War. Uh, there are other buildings there, even by Le Corbusier. This one was by Dudok in the City University uh, in, in, in Paris. Le Corbusier has actually two buildings there. It was refurbished, uh, taken care of. These horizontal planes seem to derive somehow from, from Wright, from, from his uh, uh, emphatic uh, quest for the, for the infinite uh, at the horizon, so to speak. I remember the Robin uh, House uh, in, in Chicago and other works by him. But here we have a kind of, a, I mean, it's, 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 there is a difference because this is urban. It's in an e urban environment, but still these horizontals uh, accentuated as they are, I think uh, derive somehow from the organic longings of Frank Lloyd Wright. Now here, uh, the same uh, presentation, uh, the, our guest from uh, Indonesia uh, told us that uh, because Indonesia was a colony of, um, of the Netherlands and um, they made a comment uh, about, uh, you know, how the, the colonists uh, usually depict the colony as being uh, uh, more insignificant and smaller than they actually are, uh, <laughs> you know. The politics of uh, publicity are, uh, it seems, um, unavoidable. Uh, maybe nothing exceptional, really, because we are accustomed to modernity now. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the time when it was built, um, 80 years ago, uh, I'm sure uh, the building was considered uh, modern indeed. For three years, I went to Vienna uh, in Austria with students uh, in a summer school, and we were housed at Erasmus House with rooms almost identical with what we see here. So I think uh, the architect of the Erasmus House in Vienna um, uh, 
knew something about the it's hard for me to believe that it was just a coincidence they were almost identical anyway uh, city theater utrecht uh, 1941 uh, you know in utrecht is that famous uh, villa uh, uh, schroeder house um, I get it read well. Well, this is a theater maybe without glory, but uh, you know, it was after the war and uh, somehow his buildings before the war were more uh, audacious. But I think there is value also in reticence sometimes. So considering the, the ravaging war, maybe there wasn't a, a time immediately after the war to become so-called audacious. There was enough audacity in a negative way during the Second World War. Much too much of it. Now, <laughs> inevitably he arrived. I say inevitably because indeed um, gasoline and gas is, uh, seems to rule the world. And he, he arrived at designing several uh, gas stations. I don't know if all of them for Exxon, but this is one of them quite <laughs> jolly and uh, you know, joyous and uh, you know, almost amusing considering it's a, a gas station. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, there is an optimist here, which uh, would be hard to entertain these days. But uh, anyway, that's what he designed. And I see the two colors. If we consider white a color, the white and the red in, in European alchemy, the white symbolizes the, the queen, the moon, water, uh, and the re red symbolizes the king, uh, fire, and, uh, and, uh, and, and the sun. Anyway, I just thought of this because uh, I, I, I had an interest in, in, in this pair, white and red. <laughs> 